Hello and welcome to another episode about CSD schematic tool. And in today's video, we'll be looking at single and double stub matching uh, using the Smith chart in CSD. Okay, let's open up a new space and navigate over to the schematic tool. So we're going to do everything in MicroStrip, so it's very implementable into the 3D environment. So block selection, let's first initiate a 50 ohm environment. So to do that, I'm just going to grab a port. I'm going to leave everything stock standard. So 4.3, uh, one millimeter thickness uh, substrate and uh, a length of one. Sure, that works. Let's grab a load. Let's terminate this perfectly to 50 with a ground G on the keyboard. I'm going to call this length one, that's fine. And then width 50, W50. And I'm going to set that to 1.93. And I'm just going to double check if that's 50 ohms. Task as parameters. Okay. Um, then update port impedance. Uh, I'm pretty happy with that at 5 gigahertz. That's our 50.3. So I'm going to create a system. Maybe we can tune that a little better. Close the tuner here. And let's see if we can tune this down a little bit. Tune it up, my bad. Ooh. Yeah, and let, let's settle with that. Uh, so 1.954, close the tuner. Let's take these terrible numbers off the end. Let's click update. So that's a 50 ohm line. So I'm happy with that value there. Um, okay. So that was block dependency. So by keeping the block dependency there, I could then double check the port impedance. Okay. So once we've got the port impedance all set, let's start by creating a, a single stub and a, a double stub environment. So let's say we are trying to match again. Let's go with 150. So to create a single stub environment, there's going to be some sort of, remember in single stub and double stub, everything's 50 ohms. So there's going to be some sort of translation away from the load and there's going to be a stub that comes uh, out of that translation. So let's design a single and a double stub environment. Okay. So now we're going to have a length. Let's call that D. And let's set that value to be very small. Now I want to make all of these changes here. So the, the length very small. And then when we add uh, a stub in as well, so micro strip stubs, stub, and another port. We want to make the length of it very small. So it has no impact to the Smith chart at all. And then what we're going to do is we're going to then slowly increase it using the tune capabilities uh, to achieve a match condition. So I need to set everything to 50, width 50, width 50. And let's give the stub also a name. Let's call it a single stub length 0.01. And now when I change the S parameters, block, uh, block dependency, I want to be constant, constant for both. Um, we, can, we can leave this one here. That's not going to do too much. I need to make sure I've got it set to 50. Now, when I click update, sure, update, I can go towards the Smith chart and I can see um, the, the the values here. So I've got it to be 150. Um, to make it a little easier, let's let's actually go for a, a smaller value so we can, uh, now we'll see how we go actually with a large value. So I'm going to get rid of the first network because we don't need it anymore. So we're just focusing on port two and I'll click update. Now I'm going to go over to S parameters, S parameters here, and I'm going to click on um, I'm looking for plot properties. And once we're at plot properties, we're actually going to set the frequency range to be our matching frequency. So I'm going to say, let's match at five. So here is our load. So that's our load. Um, it's 
It's, it's, it's okay. We're going to try and match that now using single, single stub methods. So we're going to click the little tune button. And here we go. So just double check in our schematic here. We've got length D, width 50 still the same. And we've also got single stub length and width 50 exactly the same. So what we're going to do first is we're going to go over to plot properties and change over to the emittance chart. Now the thing is that a stub coming out will, or a 50 ohm stub will always drive it down and see these circles here where my mouse is. So there's all these emittance circles, these complex circles that always drive it down. So for example, if you had a little green dot where my cursor is and you use a stub that's 50 ohms, it would pull all the way down here. So the length, so as I'm increasing length, increasing length, increasing length, and all the way down, it will follow this line. So for example, if I were to get this dot here, where I currently am, if I were to translate this over a certain set length until I get onto this circle here, where the real component equals 50, and the complex component, the stub can now pull the complex component down until we achieve a match condition. So let's, let's try that. So I'm going to first change the D value. Okay, let's slowly move it across. We see it's been translated. So remember, when you have a length away from the load, all it does is it pivots it from the middle and does somewhat of a little circle. So once I've achieved that, that's looking pretty good. Perfect. Now I've got it onto this little circle. It says 2i, 1i, 1. And now when I start pulling a stub in, you'll see that it follows it perfectly all the way down. Oh, overshot it a little bit. Maybe I need to change this. My max value. Let's change it to 4. Let's change the min value to 3. And let's slowly fine tune that. There we go. I'm pretty happy with that. Let's look at the Smith chart. I mean, sorry, the DB chart. So we can see perfectly at 5, we have an impedance match. So that's how you want to approach any sort of single stub matching. And remember, this works also with a, a low ohmic load. Let's go 5. Let's reset our single stub back to something very small. So D value all the way short. Yes, I want to confirm all the way short. S parameters. There it is. I need to translate it up to the circle, which I'm going to use my length translation away from the load. Uh, nearly a bit sensitive here. Let's change my max to 2. Now I'm pretty happy with that. And now I'm going to start pulling in a stub length. I'm going to need more space, more length to work with. Overshot it, it's very sensitive. There we go. Check the chart. We've achieved a stub match of 5 ohms now. So this is just using visual inspection with the Smith chart, or the emittance chart. So, how do we do a double stub environment? Well, what happens with double stub is that we're stuck with a length in between the middle that is predetermined. So let's set it to be 12. Sure, we're stuck with 12. And now we have a, rather than a single stub, we have... Um, we have a load stub length. Let's make it very small. And we have also a source stub length. Make it very small. Let's go back to 150 ohm load. Let's go to our S parameters and make sure it's a constant value of 50. Perfect. And let's click update. I'm going to go to my S parameters, and here we have our previous solution that we've done, and here we have the new solution with no matching capabilities just yet. So here, we're stuck at a random point in our Smith chart, and we're going to do the exact same technique. We're going to use the load, so I'm going to click close tuner, reopen the tuner, and we're going to use the load stub to make sure we can achieve this dot, or move the dot here, the red dot, until it's somewhere along the top you know, the, the northern hemisphere of the Smith chart along here, because we know that a shunted stub, or an open stub, is going to achieve or be able to pull downwards. Okay, we can't pull up. If we land the, the red dot down, let's say, it at 2i, it, it won't magically pull up. We have to make sure it's on the top half. Okay, so let's achieve that now. Let's go with the load stub. Let's give... Bit more length let's slowly move it and see what happens to it 
Nothing. Let's double check everything. Yep, we got that working. Yep, we've got 150. Uh, that's width 50. That's source length. Yep. Okay, let's click update again. And we are dealing with three. Okay, let's try one more time. Let's see if the source length will do anything. We're not seeing any change. Let's try one more time. Set constant 50. What have I done wrong? Let's close the tuner. Here, let's try a different length of maybe four, four millimeters. We're happy with this stub. Maybe there's a bit of a connection issue. Let's try and reconnect it all. One, two, mismatch load. Perfect. And click update. Port impedance, double check it's on 50. Yep. We've done the ports correct. Okay, it's moving now. Sweet. Let's go tune again and let's go stub length. So remember, we're going to be focusing on the load first. So let's see if it's moving. Okay, perfect. We have it moving now. So I'm not too sure what went wrong there. Might have been when I was copying and pasting everything. So we're going to start from something very small. So here's our point, red dot. And then we have the source length also very small. And as I increase the load length now, I can see it starting to move until we get onto that line. Perfect. Now we just got to use the source stub. Slowly increase it. Give it a larger maximum value. There we go. It's going to get very sensitive soon. There we go, nearly. Oh, too much. So now I'm going to go for the max value of 6.2. I'm just going to change it to 6 to 6.2. And maybe 6.5 instead. A little bit more range. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Now I'm going to investigate the dB chart. And there we go. So we've achieved also in green, a single stub matching and a double stub matching scenario. Okay. So uh, that's how you want to approach single stub and double stub matching. Uh, remember, this technique is, is completely different as you, what you'd use on a normal, regular Smith chart. Um, but however, that we're using such resources as the visual smith chart that we can update in real time um, this is the easiest way so just always make sure you can somehow get a little dot to, to feature on this uh, emittance equals one curve here okay well thanks for tuning in i'll see you next time